collecting stories, we collecting paraphernalia, memorabilia, we collecting different posters, books, albums, records, flyers, all the different memories and archiving it with the, with the Wisconsin Black Historical Society Museum. This is what they do all year round. They preserve the history of Black Wisconsin and, and beyond. And so they are one of the organizations that people from all over the world come to and try to find out history about different families, about different culture, different incidents in Milwaukee. I'm talking about from CNN to you name it, uh, Hollywood directors and whatnot, call them to find out archival information, history, and do research. And so us encouraging the true knowledge, which is the glue to all the other elements in hip hop, we teach the true knowledge to be able to have some awareness of where we come from in doing this. We just a continuum of our ancestors of the traditions that came before us. Hip hop is just an extension of that. So in order to help preserve that, do all of our backgrounds coming together in this great community called hip hop, we're working with a real institution to help preserve our stories. For today, these stories y'all hearing right now, the stories from yesterday that, that, that paved the way for these stories to be on the stage, and the stories for the future, all right? So make sure you stop at the tables and find out more. And we want some stories from you all, because, you know, again, this is the birth date, according to the legend of hip hop, hip, uh, hip -hop itself. The whole world is celebrating right now, DJ Dynamic. Everybody celebrate right now. Y'all could be anywhere. Y'all right here celebrating with us, and we appreciate it. Thank you. This is huge. This is monumental. It's our first time adding the CEO sessions to our summer park jam, and the reason why is we want to uplift the future. We want to uplift all the work that we do and be able to bring it together and connect the resources in the community that we have here. So again, thank you so much to Marcus Center and all of the support staff around here that's help making it possible. And we're going to introduce and bring up our uh, keynote right now. Y'all ready? Yeah. I mean, y'all ready? Yeah, y'all yeah, can make some noise. This is not a library. This is not a library. Yes, indeed. All right. Um, we're going to bring up Wordsworth. Come on up, Wordsworth. And um, I don't need to necessarily introduce Wordsworth, but if you don't know, you're about to find out this, um, this, this, this giant right here that you're about to be introduced to is um, respected, we call him like your favorite rapper's favorite rapper, like one of those kind of guys. <laughs> so if you don't know who Wordsworth is, trust me, your favorite rapper knows who Wordsworth is, right? <laughs> so that's how we explain it to some of the news. Um, but he's come to share a lot of different information and knowledge. He's not just an artist or an MC, he's an educator, a curriculum developer, entrepreneur, and so much more. And we thank you for coming back to Wordsworth. Once again, y'all give it up for Wordsworth. And also, sitting there, also when they announce the parents that help raise the kids as well, because it takes the parents to to help the kids uh, become who they are as well, too. So, um, this, this situation of writing is kind of kind of serious to write about hip hop 50 years, because there's so much in 50 years that has occurred and uh, still occurring and is evolving every day. So, um, I wrote it from the perspective of giving you some history of it and how it's affecting me and then the things that's going on now and where it's going um, down the line. So today is August 11th, we celebrate hip hop and I'm excited about it. Um, so we have here, Four. you know who this is? God. All right. Four. All right, cool, her. So this is how come we have hip hop and 1520 Cedric Avenue in the Bronx. That's where it all started when he had park jams at and park, you know, he, he did a recreation center party and things like that having evolved to us being here on stage. Kids and going to environmental water, fixing the water in the environments. So different things like that all started from this man here. Just, hey, let me figure out a way to bring the community together. In which that's what Troop School is doing, keeping that legacy alive. All right, so 50 years of hip hop, we celebrate it because it's, it's elevated everything. Music, fashion, film, health, entrepreneurship, dancing, DJing, art, sports, even if you get a call. Uh, so it's infinite, it touches everything. Whatever it is, it's gonna be hip hop. Um, it's what we're seeing, what's happening in the world today, it's what's happening to me, it's what's happening to us, what we create are, how we do things, and how they occur. And it's a global call. It brings attention and call to action about social justice, social economics, trends, wealth, physical, mental health, and how we all just exist in relatives. 
Hip hop is an audio telescope that introduced us to different planets. So I know what's going on in Texas, so I can know what's going on in Virginia. It's an audio telescope. I can hear a record and say, what? That's what they're doing out there in Milwaukee, okay? So it introduced us to all the stars in different parts of the galaxies across the states. Hip hop is also become enamored with clothing worn, the environment in different areas, buildings and houses, and how different things are painted, but also the slang that we use and choose to use. Hip hop's impact is an infinite rippling effect where some sort to be a moment has become a mind. So we also have the Hip Hop Museum, also that we have the Universal Hip Hop Museum in the Bronx with memorabilia that chronicles the timeline of hip hop. And you have the Brooklyn Public Library. So they actually just have this uh, display, and those are all the Jay-Z's lyrics up there on the front of the building, draped on the front of the building. And you can go inside there and actually see how that they documented the life of Jay-Z. I, I would have never thought this would be happening. That they took time out, lyrics on the front of the building, that shows you the value of what's being said, and it keeps to the essence of what hip hop is about. It's about the message. So that's the one thing that we cannot lose is the message in the music. And then, as we go forward about it and think about it, we won Oscars, Grammys, Pulitzer Prizes, you know? So it's not only just being recognized once, it was used to be just kind of like, I don't know what they're doing out there, and they can know it's turning it down, you need to be inside this time of night, you know, and everything like that. Now people are starting to gradually open the door. Because a lot of these events actually, artists wouldn't even go to some of these events. They would boycott these events because they felt there weren't enough categories or actually uh, acknowledging the artists that created some of this music and the genre and itself. We would probably have like one category on the Grammys and that would be about it. Now we have other categories and different things and different aspects that go across all different types of award shows. And then you have albums like Nas's Illmatic, 36 Chambers, Lauryn Hill's Miseducation. And all those albums are actually now in the Library of Congress recording. So that's letting you know that within the time, it's actually had such an impact on it that they want to make sure that it's kept around, not just for now, but forever. And then, thank you for the mic. And here you have the Milwaukee Hip Hop, preserving the culture as well. So the museum, I need to check it out. I'm gonna try to make it there. I actually uh, text them to try to find out the hours. So if I gotta get up early in the morning, but if I can go, I wanna go out there and check that out as well. And then, when I came out here, shout out to Strick. He brought me out here, EMC performed some years ago. He was like, you gotta go see me with the zone doing this thing. <laughs> and we came out here, had a good time partying. And you can see, he's even evolved through hip hop. He has a book out, the DJ method. So hip hop also has authors. And I'm constantly saying that all of us are authors. We should just write our stories. The one thing about that is, if you're an artist and you got an album written, right? You, all those lyrics are actually a book. I actually got a book out, it's actually out there, and that's what I did. I turned my, I was like, I was gonna write a whole new book about poetry, and I was like, what am I doing? I'm wild. I have a whole book of poetry in this album, so I converted those lyrics into books. So that's what I'm gonna do. And all the kids out there, every time you write something down or you got an idea, keep track of it. Keep track of it, and eventually, right now, some of y'all might be like, just writing it, writing it, but down the line, you realize you got a book right there no question about it. All right, so the elements of hip hop sometimes can get lost. Because it's evolved, so we got DJing, rapping, break dancing, graffiti. And even though they change in their, in their way, in their form, they're still the same, but technology has helped them to actually gradually grow into other forms. So you may have for, you know, instead of graffiti today, we have a lot of visual artists that may do it on a digital scale and things like that. Uh, dancers are being hired to perform with big no-name stars, um, with big known stars globally. Um, and then DJing, even though some people don't carry the crates no more, even though I say DJ over here got the crates and everything to take it there. Um, some people have just forgot about the essence of the vinyl records and things like that. 
that would actually um, the beginning of it all. Now that everything's digital. So that's one thing I would like to say as well. We got to make sure that we preserve what it is and what it be, where it came from because if not, the people will alter what it, where it started. They'll be like, yeah, DJ started on YouTube. That's it. <laughs> or TikTok. They'll start coming in with something like that. You know, yeah, great dance. And I saw it as a, as a challenge. So that's why I started it. So we have to make sure that we're preserving the culture. And it doesn't matter what age you are to preserve the culture. It could be the youth. It could be us, it could be people even older than us. But preserving the culture is very key because when it gets commercialized at some, at some point, sometimes it's all about the money and the message, once again, gets lost. So, we use cardboard. If you look here, you can see that duct tape cardboard right there. And then we also use the murals, making murals with the graffiti. So, Things like that have changed different ways, but now, I remember doing graffiti, used to be like, nah, you're messing up the side of the building. So now we got art murals. And I think that's just part of the evolution. A lot of these different um, groups and um, artists that were just, people who were considered just graffiti or rap artists back then, are now actually understanding that they even had to evolve into business people. So that the entrepreneurship of hip hop it started from something and now it's, it didn't really have a name, but now it's become something that's actually being recognized. People are getting hired to do hip hop, right? So even if you had, let's say you had a business building and you needed to get, you know, you needed to get some uh, type of art on the side of the wall, they actually would look for somebody that's done hip hop now because they want to make sure that they're getting people to walk by the building and actually capture somebody's attention. They're no longer just doing the tradition 